Hello people, in this video we want to look at how to read pediatrics. So pediatrics is um, about children. So uh, pediatrics is a theory mark, uh, theory paper for you with 100 marks. So it is actually smaller than your medicine, gynecology, surgery. Okay, it is almost half the content size. Practicals, you will have uh, any case, uh, clinical case could be a protein energy malnutrition cerebral palsy, rheumatic heart disease, ventricular septal defect, pneumonia, cretinism, that is congenital hypothyroidism, etc. One newborn case uh, will be there. Uh, you need to know APGAR score, Ballard score, basically for uh, determining the prematurity. So these things you should know for the newborn case. Why why you can have spotters, the theory why why you will have instruments like your uh, endotracheal uh, tube, feeding tube, etc. Uh, X-rays you will have uh, usually a diaphragmatic hernia etc. Nutrition, nutrition guys they will ask you a lot of dals etc. About them, their nutritious value etc. And uh, drugs they will ask you about uh, adrenaline, epinephrine, emergency drugs for resuscitation and many other drugs. Vaccines usually they will ask you a lot of vaccines, uh, varicella etc. Both, both they will ask you should know uh, the national immunization schedule you should know very very well. Okay. Apart from that, the extra ones that are there in IAP like varicella, typhoid, hepatitis A, the extra ones you should, you should just know the names and some amount of uh, uh, when to give that is enough. Okay, But national immunization schedule you should know completely. So this is what you should uh, know about your uh, pattern, university pattern. Now which textbook to refer, uh, best to refer guy, uh, use the latest edition. And uh, this is a question bank which comes from, from your university probably. Refer to the question bank, look at the last year questions and find out high priority questions and read them. Okay. And for practical, which um, uh, textbook would you use? You can use one of these, um, uh, Meherban Singh, Mayur, Chedda. I bought this uh, Aruchemi, but I felt it was too exhaustive. You know, just give important points is more important, I feel. Anyways, guys, uh, we have uh, individual book reviews for all these books. So please uh, visit them and then make a decision. <clears throat> Don't buy uh, too much of exhaustive books also, okay? Um, now, now let's move on. So textbooks you will buy. Now uh, listen in class also. Uh, don't uh, depend only on these uh, videos or textbooks. So listen in class. It will register because they will be saying the important things uh, repeatedly. Okay. Then uh, coming to the top priority questions in pediatrics. This is all you have to know. You should, should, should know these uh, to pass. So neonatal jaundice. So basically if it is coming on the first day, it is uh, pathological. If it's coming on the second day onwards, it is physiological. So basically jaundice can be, um, if there is something called as prolonged jaundice after three weeks, that can indicate neonatal, uh, there can be cholestasis, that is there could be some surgical need, um, uh, surgical cause of this jaundice. So you should be very careful about it. So you will read about phototherapy and then what else guys, uh, exchange transfusion, etc. Then coming to vitamin D deficiency, uh, it can it also probably called rickets. In rickets, but you have vitamin D dependent in the refractory rickets also, you need to know all about that. Bow legs, uh, genu, varum, valgum, extra. Rickets, very important. All the signs, ratchetic rosary and your, uh, what is that, uh, M something was there? No, this Harrison sulcus, okay, very important. All those uh, important terminologies you will learn. The fraying, uh, cupping uh, of the bone, right, all that you should learn, okay. Coming to meningitis, the bacterial meningitis, that is pyogenic and the TB meningitis, very important. So bacterial, you will see a lot of neutrophils. TB, what will you see? Mostly lymphocytes you should know, okay. In both of this, glucose will be less, protein will be more. You should just remember this much. Very important. Cerebral palsy, very important. You will find uh, even for your clinical, it's very important. For your theory, even your orthopedics, sometimes uh, they can ask you. So cerebral palsy, guys, is uh, a permanent insult, non-progressive. So in this, the types you should know. Spastic, dyskinetic, ataxic, mixed. Very, very important to know the types, okay, of uh, CP. Should, should know about breastfeeding benefits, compare with uh, cow's milk, how to breastfeed, what is the position of the baby, when to breastfeed, etc, etc. Complementary feeding is the new word, don't use the term weaning. Uh, with the breastfeeding, they are adding extra, so it is called as complementary. Very important, complementary starts after 6 months, breastfeeding exclusive is done till 6 months. 
then uh, coming to nephrotic syndrome nephritic can become nephrotic in nephrotic there will be lot of protein loss more than 3.5 gram per day is it remember there will be frothy urine protein urea fatty casts in the urine etc nephrotic very important nephritic or nephrotic anyways you will finally treat it with steroids okay uh, the nephritic can resolve by itself seizures guys you should know about all types of seizures febrile seizures Uh, that will be in a certain age group only during fever febrile seizures then you have other types of seizures then how will you treat status epilepticus midazolam lorazepam phenytoin valproate all that regimen you should know then coming to protein energy malnutrition you should know about marasmus and quassiorca sure, the differences uti urinary tract infection very important why because Uh, any uti in a child can indicate a congenital anomaly a vesico ureteric reflux so you should know all this then coming to cretinism congenital hypothyroidism very 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 important because if you can detect hypothyroidism in a baby very uh, the sooner you detect the best because if just by giving thyroid hormone this baby will escape retardation right then coming to all that is acute lymphoblastic leukemia common in children isn't it so in this you have so many types what and all types do you have in all b cell type t cell type etc in this also philadelphia chromosome can be positive so here you can see acute lymphoblastic leukemia here they are showing you so a lot of lymphoblasts right so the child will have what bone pain generalized lymphadenopathy very important fever bone pain lymphadenopathy very important to say all this it's the most common childhood malignancy guys and it can um, what else is there here classification so you can have pre b cell b cell t cell you remember that and there is some childhood type adult type burkitt type good thing is it has good cure rate okay that's why it is important and all this therapy vincristine methotrexate standard things that you give so people we are looking at some high priority things in pediatrics okay down syndrome do you know down syndrome people uh basically autosomal um, it is so it can affect boys and girls trisomy 31 sorry 21 you should know all the uh, features of these people uh about the eyes epicanthus slanting upwards uh, nose bridge nasal bridge will be flat broad right mental retardation can be there so main thing you should know here they can have heart disease okay so this is what you should know heart disease can be there coming to growth charts people <clears throat> you should know about the growth charts as to why um wait here so this is about the weight how to calculate weight of the child for different uh, age you should know this then you should know how to calculate height of the child height only one formula is there so height of the <coughs> child 6y plus 77 this you should know so based on this what you should do you should uh, know what is the expected and what is the uh, actual value and then you should be able to plot these growth charts okay and um, uh, you should be able to say whether it is falling within the normal percentile right around the 50th percentile or if it is uh, below two or three standard deviations it can be in the red right so all this you should note short stature causes you should know it can be familial it can be uh, uh, constitutional right so what are all can it be it can be familial or constitutional or it can be pathological pathological will be because of what pathological can be because of nutrition or hypothyroidism growth hormone deficiency etc malaria is a very important topic guys especially cerebral malaria they can ask you where there will be edema right of the brain so here we are showing you the life cycle of uh, the malaria parasite anyways this you will draw for all malaria questions right mostly if there is more marks they can simply ask you malaria complications so you'll have to say cerebral malaria algid malaria septicemic malaria black water fever pulmonary edema renal failure all the organs they have written here hypoglycemia anemia hyperpyrexia acidosis shock next uh, important question is heart failure heart failure uh, basically in children <clears throat> that's what they are asked so in children right based on the onset you can say if it was uh, uh, within the one week of birth then it could be a duct dependent systemic circulation if it is uh, within the first month it can be a patent ductus arteriosus one to two months it can be transposition and two to six months will be vst etc ventricular septal defect 
So in children, the causes can be congenital. It could be a Kawasaki disease, rheumatic fever. Very important to know these things because for a child, it is very difficult for them to say the symptoms, isn't it? So basically, you will have to know how to treat because the child will not come to you and tell that it is having all these symptoms of heart failure. So what will the baby, uh, the complaints be? There will be failure to thrive. It will not be feeding well, right? There will be edema, right? Dif uh, difficulty in breathing, cough. So basically, you will see that there is uh, fast breathing, fast heart rate, cough, hepatomegaly, edema, cardiac enlargement. When you hear the heart sounds, you may hear a third sound gallop. You might see some poor pulses, right? Um, there can be cyanosis or there may not be cyanosis. Uh, if there is left to right shunt, then it is going to cause uh, no cyanosis. But if it is right to left, there could be cyanosis, right? Then you can see JVP, etc. Similarly, rheumatic fever, guys, post-streptococcal, you should know the Jones criteria. They will ask you in the exam. Jones criteria, basically, major criteria, you remember, um, these are the five things you should know. Carditis, that is the heart uh, is affected, right? You will have the mitral valve being affected, mechalum's patch, etc. Then here you have the uh, polyarthritis, that is migratory polyarthritis. You should know about this. Arthritis could be very, very common. Then coming to subcutaneous nodules and then erythema marginatum and chorea, Sindenham's chorea, that is uh, St. Victor's dance, right? These are the major criteria you should know for uh, in revised Jones criteria for rheumatic fever, rheumatic heart disease, rheumatic fever uh, diagnosis, okay? So basically you should have two major or one major with two minor or others, but just remember this, uh, two major or one major with two minor, okay? So that's about uh, rheumatic, okay? Uh, they last ask Jones criteria. When you, pneumonia, they last ask AFI. That is, uh, uh, what is AFI? Am I saying the word right? Uh, it is uh, ARTI, sorry, ARTI. Acute Respiratory Tract Infection Control Program. So they'll ask you about the categories. So here you have only three categories, right? What are the three categories? So the baby has no fast breathing, but it has a fever, cough, cold, etc. That, then you will say there is no pneumonia and you'll just give it some home care with some paracetamol. But if there is uh, fast breathing, then you will uh, give it to home care with amoxicillin. And then if there is severe pneumonia, that is, what is severe pneumonia? With this uh, fast breathing and lower chest and drawing, there is lethargy, the baby is lethargic, right? Then what you will do? We will admit it, you will give it this um, ampicillin, gentamicin, IV antibiotics you will give, okay? And then if there is anything extra, you will treat that like seizure, etc. You will treat, okay? So this is ARTI, okay? Then coming to diarrhea, they will ask you about diarrhea. Diarrhea, any child comes with diarrhea, diarrhea you have to check whether it has dehydration. That is what you are focusing on, okay? And um, uh, diarrhea, basically you will see whether there is uh, a no dehydration, then you will just give it, uh, what will you give it? Plan A, then you will just give it some extra fluids and zinc, etc. And um, uh, some dehydration is there. That means uh, there is some restlessness, irritability, sunken eyes, absent tears, dry mouth, and it drinks eagerly, a skin pinch goes back a little slowly. Then you will give it plan B. That is, you will give it fluids and um, that is like ORS. Very important to know ORS, guys. Are you focusing? Focus, guys. So you have to give it ORS. Then you'll have to uh, ask the mother to also continue breastfeeding fluids, 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 and then give it zinc, etc. If there is some add-on add problem, then only you will add antibiotics in this case. However, in severe dehydration where the baby looks like this, um, where it is lethargic, it is not even able to drink, etc., then um, uh, it is so dehydrated. For this guy, you have to admit uh, and you have to give IV fluids, ringer lactate with dextrose, 5% dextrose. You'll also have to give antibiotic for this case. Definitely, you'll have to give antibiotics, okay? With zinc, continue breastfeeding, etc., if it can feed. Okay? National immunization schedule, I think you have already seen this, but anyways, we will tell you about it also. So, national immunization schedule, uh, just remember here, that uh, at birth you will give BCG, oral polio and hepatitis B. I think this you have learned already so many times. And 10, 6 and uh, 14 weeks. Guys, focus here. Are you focusing? 10, uh, uh, 6, 10. Sorry, 6, 10 and 14 weeks. You will give uh, same things only you will give. Like oral polio, then pentavalent. Then fractional dose of IPV you will give. That is inactivated polio vaccine. You will give only at 6 and 14. Okay, this is these are all um, uh, given everywhere. Okay, these are all given everywhere. Whatever we have written outside, no, that is given only in areas where, wherever that uh, problem is there, only there they will give. Okay, <clears throat> so don't look at that as of now. Just look at whatever is given everywhere in the whole, uh, in the entire India. 9 to 12 months, measles, rubella, etc. Okay, this much if you remember, it's enough. Okay. Then coming back here. So, anyways, what will you give in endemic areas? Wherever there is problem, there you will give rota, pneumococcal, <clears throat> then uh, Japanese encephalitis, etc. Okay. 
coming backward is our uh, PPT. Yeah. Focus here, guys. So we are done with top priority questions in pediatrics. If this much you know, you will pass. This much you have to have to know. Okay. Now let us move on to the next slide. Uh, specific terms you should know. Okay. Sometimes we don't read these questions, but they can um, come. See, in growth you have something called a spencer grasp, grasp, right? Fine motor skill it is. See, like this, using the thumb and the index finger, the child has to hold things. At one year, they will have mature spencer grasp. Okay, that you should know. Croup you should know. Croup can be caused because of why this is it. They will have that uh, laryngo tracheal bronchitis. Please read all about croup. Then they will ask you willing tumor. You wouldn't have read it. It's a specific terminology. You should know such things. Nephroblastoma. Very good. So this is an embryonal tumor. It is actually coming under the malignant side, isn't it? And um, there will be what in this? Hematuria, pain in the abdomen, abdominal mass, hypertension, etc. So basically something about this. It is the, on the 11th gene. If you want to know this. And then um, the the kidney's uh, shape itself is lost kind of thing, right? Then some pathology diagram. See, the kidney is not even developed. It has abortive tubul tubules, ab abortive glomerulus. It hasn't developed properly at all. What do you do for these people? This is very, very good uh, cure rate. 85% cure rate it has. So for William Tumor, they are talking about surgery, chemo, radio, etc. And coming to caput suicidinium cephalhematoma, this you should know caput suicidium is more superficial. Cephalhematoma is between the periosteum and the bone, isn't it? Here you can see caput suicidinium marked. See caput suicidinium between the skin and the galial aponeurotica. Cephalhematoma is between the periosteum and the bone. Okay. So the cephalhematoma is more deeper. It will not cross the suture line. So something you should know. Cephalhematoma and caput suicidinium. Other things are also there. Uh, anyways, we are not focusing on them. Great people. So you finished so many things, specific terms, high priority, everything you looked at. Now, uh, pediatrics question paper, I mean answer paper, right? You have to spray it with few words, nice words, okay? Failure to thrive. Just write any disease they give you. You say the baby will fail to thrive or something. Malnutrition is a big cause for everything. Breastfeeding is a solution to almost everything on earth. Growth is something you have to monitor all the time. And growth and development can be fine motor, gross motor, social, language, all that you write. And then early detection and prevention is very, very good, especially hypothyroidism or screening a newborn for all these inborn errors of metabolism, etc. National immunization schedule, print it in your brain. This is what you have to write everywhere you say national immunization schedule, prevention, prevention, preventive, uh, early catching. Okay, you got the point. Okay, so this is about the pediatrics paper. Draw diagrams, diagrams will help you. Just practicing one growth chart, just practicing a growth chart can help you. Anatomy diagrams can help you. Like uh, just drawing uh, for UTI question if they ask you, just draw the kidney, ureter and bladder. You know, just draw that uh, structure just to show that you know the uh, anatomy kind of a thing. Malaria, you can draw the life cycle, etc. Some diagrams might help. The examiner will be more interested in correcting your paper. <clears throat> so this is all about pediatrics. It is quite a uh, low volume uh, subject compared to the other things in uh, MBBS like medicine or surgery or uh, OBG uh, you have where you have gynecology and obstetrics. So pediatrics is relatively uh, lesser in burden. Okay, So read it and you will be able to sail through all the best. Bye bye.